Hello, so in today's video we decided that we would do a bit of a shorter one. Um, some of our more recent videos have been quite long, but this time we figured we would just show you a few tips um, on modeling in Maya, uh, particularly for hard surface. Um, some of the stuff you might already know, some of it might already be kind of simple for you, um, but I know some of these, like I'm not ashamed to admit it, uh, it took me quite a long time to learn some of these, long after I got my first job um, in the VFX industry. So the first tip is, Let's say you're modeling something, right? We have our, our bit of geo here. Uh, it's just a cube that I've extended, beveled, added some divisions and given it a bit of a twist so the shape's a bit more dynamic. Let's say this is just part of a vehicle and you've made this and this is your base mesh. Okay, and then let's say you need to start adding details into this, right? Let's say you wanted to add like panels in here and stuff like that. So you would maybe go in and extrude and then go in. And then um, what you'd very quickly find is when you come to adding like if we were to just quickly do this like when you come to adding loops here um we'd have to clean this up a bit and uh try and hold these edges you're not gonna have the topology to do this cleanly we're gonna get like weird pinching and you can kind of see it a little bit here um, I think had, you know, if I went and added divisions to the rest of this or um, bevels to the rest of this, you're going to start seeing weird pinching and it just isn't going to work very well. Right, and you're going to get all, look at this, all sorts of weirdness down here and stuff like that. So uh, typically, and I was guilty of this as well when I first started, is you, especially with curved objects like this, and if you want to add more details to things, right, like if this is a model you're going to be looking at close up, you really need to... Um, have just a higher resolution of your mesh, right? Higher subdivisions. And I'm not saying do that straight away, but definitely once you're at a point where the base mesh is solid, like you have all the forms down, right? Like let's say this is part of a vehicle and you've modeled the entire vehicle and it matches as perfectly as you can. Um, and now is the time to go and start adding details, but then you're like, oh, um, my base mesh is kind of low resolution. How do I uh, like up res this without, you know, just going in and adding manually more loops and then doing this and then having to go and like edit the edge flow. Um, and having to deal with all of this weirdness, right? That would take forever. So um, the best way I've found to do this is if I just go ahead and select all the edges, right, that we want to hold, let's assume these edges here all need to be flat, okay? What you could do is go ahead and bevel these and then subdivide, and then, yeah, that would hold your shape, but then you'd have a bunch of unnecessary edges here. What I found the best thing to do is, is actually use the crease tool. I'm just holding our shift and right click, going to crease tool, and then holding our middle mouse, we're gonna to drag to the right, and that's gonna increase the crease amount. Um, then if I smooth preview that, you can see it's kind of holding its shape, right? If I just up the subdivision levels. Um, that's hold, that's smoothing now, but we haven't actually added any geometry. So this is a, a, a nice feature within Maya. I'm not sure about software to have it. I'm sure they do have something similar um, where you can just tell Maya to hold those edges. And it also works when you go ahead and smooth your mesh. So now all we'd have to do is come over and hit smooth. Let's hit that twice, right? And then you want to get to mesh display and then harden those edges so that it's nice and clean again. And now look, we have our shape right but now much higher topolo uh, 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 topology density right so if we wanted to go in and add panels now we absolutely can and we can do it to our heart's content right like and there's no there'll be no issues adding loops here to to like um what's it called uh, to keep these sharp corners and you won't really get any artifacts at all and if there are they're gonna be really minimal and then that's like such a better way of um of, of up resing your your base mesh right and then like that took five seconds okay and i can undo it if i need to i can go back down and then it just was back to that just like that right and it like it took me a very very long time <laughs> to figure out that i can do this but this is so simple and you know you maybe you can't imagine a use case for it right now but trust me like you will find a time just because whenever you're modeling anything you want to keep it as simple as possible for as long as possible so if you get the form down and you're happy with it like let's say you have your model and it's low res and then you smooth preview it and it all like flows nicely but the topology density just isn't high enough just add some creases on those edges and then just smooth it and then voila like you have the the density that you need and you can start working that up um so yeah that's the first tip uh this one helps me massively i'll use this all the time um the second one is this is a much smaller thing so 
you probably all know what bevel is by now um, unless you're really really uh, quite new to this but let's just assume that you know what the bevel is if we um, went and beveled these edges and then what I like to do typically instead of um, let me reduce that amount there so it doesn't go too extreme instead of just adding uh, two segments like this typically what I like to do when I'm modeling and what we were encouraged to do when I worked at um, ILM is instead of doing that we would turn chamfer off here and it would just add these holding edges um, and that just sort of gets a nicer result I think and I prefer to do that rather than having it in the geometry I would only really bevel the edge if it was going to be a feature of the model um, a bigger feature that is rather than just adding some like uh, shading to the corners if you like because nothing's perfectly um, sharp um, if I go ahead and smooth preview this now you can see what's happening is it kind of looks like it's bowing out a little bit it's very very subtle right but things are kind of like collapsing in on the edge it's not quite holding them properly like yes we have this sharp corner but you can also see that this edge is moving massively right so when we come to like a cr out of UVing this and adding textures this edge here is going to slide and that's going to be represented in the UVs and potentially cause some stretching so what I like to do is if we come to the multi-cut tool just add another set of holding edges right keep these square or as square as you can right it's one thing we like to do whenever we're modeling is just keep things square in general it's not the hard and fast rule but generally you, it's, it's better to keep it that way um, save yourself some headache believe me um, so once we do that and if we smooth it what you can see is the shape holds a lot better than the normals the smoothing looks a lot cleaner we're now getting it's not bowing out so much and also this edge here is hardly moving at all you see how much that uh, is reduced if I was to kind of uh, make these a bit smaller even and just tighten that up a bit like so and then I went to smooth it you can see it's hardly moving at all okay and that's ideal right and then yeah you might have a few more edges and this might not be applicable if you're making some of a game um, but at least talking from a VFX perspective these extra edges here is fine especially if this is like a, a an asset that's a bit more hero like you're gonna see it closer up um, so I would encourage you to do that not just for the visual benefits but also just to save yourself a headache when you're doing the UVs and you just have less of your geo sliding around um, Okay, so for the last tip, um, this is something that it took me forever to figure out how to do this. And I'm going to talk about punching holes or making like cylindrical cuts um, or even uh, like sharp cuts in, uh, in a cylinder. It took me a long time to figure out the best way to do this. Um, and I think it's quite hard for someone that's new um, to know this just because it's it's... It, it almost is like it just seems like it you expect it to work but it just doesn't so there was many times when I first got into modeling where I would do something like this right and then I would go ahead and bevel these edges and then do this you know let's just turn the chamfer off right and then do this and then maybe I would go ahead and then bevel all of these like so you can see that's already causing some weirdness right but then I would be like oh actually hang on no I need to bevel these corner edges here as well so let's just undo that then select these corner edges right go ahead and bevel that but then as you can see what will happen is when I smooth this you're getting these really really like harsh looking weird pinching effects and that's because the way uh, smoothing works um, and I'll try and explain it as best as I can um, is that when you smooth, essentially what your what my is doing is it's averaging out the difference or averaging out uh, these edges, these vertices, um, and pulling them in. So it's assuming there's more in between here, and it's just kind of like smoothing the mesh out and averaging it. So because there's not really enough density here in the mesh, it's not really sure. You know, it's it's pulling things in different directions, but it doesn't really it doesn't really know how to resolve this properly, and it's not really giving you the cleanest result um, so a much better way to do this and kind of like our first tip you know when we said um, to subdivide up to add detail you're going to do the exact same thing on your cylinder right so I have one here I think this is 48 divisions instead of this being the old one was 16 so let's say we want to go ahead and add in the same kind of shape so let's just get the multi cut tool out let's select some of our faces something like that extrude that in and then bevel our edges up here 
Actually, you know what? We'll select all of our edges so we can do this all at once. Just like that. Okay, and then what I'm also going to do is just add an additional edge running through here just to kind of keep these areas quite square. Pull that up a bit. Right, and then obviously we've got an end on here because we haven't connected this. So we just have to connect that up like that. But if I go ahead and smooth this now, you can see the pinching is far, far, far less noticeable, right? Once you get out here, you really can't see it very much. Um, I would say you probably want to go even higher than this um, resolution-wise if you're going to be adding these kind of shapes. Like I would maybe increase it up to this kind of resolution before you start adding your um, your cuts in. And you might be like, oh, you know, well, that's going to make it so much harder to work with. But remember, okay, key thing is when you're modeling, keep it as low as possible for as simple as possible with the topology. Sorry, that sentence made no sense. Keep it as simple as possible for as long as possible when you're modeling. Then, only when everything's done, um, the mesh is blocked out, all the shapes are correct, right? If you think the silhouette, the surface forms are correct, right? Like imagine if you'd modeled an airplane, um, get all like the, the shapes right. So there's no panel lines, it's just the wings, the fuselage, the engines. Those are all modeled in, but there's no panels, there's no separated pieces or indents, right? Get all that done, then subdivide up to a higher level, then add your details, because it's going to save yourself so much headache, right? And you can see we're still getting a bit of pinching, but it's massively reduced. If I go ahead and make a cylinder now, just to prove the point, and up this to something like 64. Um, hell, let's go even higher. Let's go up to like 70. Then just increase this to around the same size. Bring it up like so. Okay. Get our multi cut tool out again, select our faces, extrude those in. Then I'm just going to add another holding edge here and here, like so. Okay, then if we go ahead and select our edges, if you're wondering why I'm selecting the faces first, it's because generally I find this to be quicker. I just select the faces. Hold down control and right click, then go to edges and to edge perimeter. It's another tip for you. Um, generally, I find that's a lot quicker than manually going in and just selecting the edges because that can sometimes take a while. It won't always go all the way around. Anyway, um, now if we go ahead and bevel these, okay, and the smooth preview that, you can see we're basically getting like almost no pinching whatsoever, right? To the point where you just can't notice it. And if we look at our original, Right, slightly different shape, but the same sort of things happening. You can see, you can see that there, and there's basically none of it there whatsoever. So you just need to add a few more divisions, right? Like this is obviously way too low for this kind of shape, but then once you get up to this point, you know, that's fine. And then you're getting those nice insets, and it looks clean, and there's no weird artifacts going on. So um, yeah, that's just a few little tips. If if you didn't understand some of this, or if some of it wasn't quite clear, or you'd like to hear how to do something else in Maya, please do let us know. Let us know in the comments. We're always happy to answer any questions you have. Um, even make videos based on your recommendations, or any of um, any of the questions you have at all. Um, but yeah, I hope that was helpful for you, like uh, all of our content. I, I, I hope that you, you, you get something out of this and you can kind of learn and improve because I know how tough it is um, for a 3D artist. It took me years to get to the point that I'm at. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope it helps. Thank you very much for watching.